Caddis Max was here trying to suck and try at this video. My first one I was just blabbing for way too long, even for my own standards. As you can tell by the thumbnail, this is what a really worn motor looks like. A lot of people see me take apart power tools and say, oh, the brushes, the commutator's great, and they say, well, it's really black. It's not about the discoloration. When you have a black carbon brush, graphite and carbon brush, it's going to make the commutator black. That's not, not what determines something's worn out. It's this. If we take the edge of this file, I don't know why it has a little... You can see there how deeply grooved this commutator is. That's what a worn commutator looks like. Like, ouch. This tool is in great condition. Real quickly, it's a... I don't think it's a actual knockoff of a earlier Milwaukee right angle drill. Lots of companies, you know, companies that make flooring or companies that make siding will actually have power tools that are under, quote unquote, their own brand. You don't see them too often, but Milwaukee, DeWalt, Makita is all made tools uh, that aren't knockoffs. But if you contact one of the major to power tool manufacturers and say, I want to buy a thousand or two thousand or five thousand units. But could you make them in blue and put our, whatever brand this is, Wood Turner's Wonders on it? Power tool companies are happy to do that because it's a fixed sale. They're like, oh, we get to sell a couple thousand units. We get the money. <laughs> that other company gets to deal with them. Oh, and they want a blue housing? Uh, no problem. So this was for some kind of thing. I suspect it was used for drum sanding because... Uh, whatever that was part of the uh, trigger switch the housing everything was in great condition but this tool didn't work because unfortunately it did not have auto stop brushes so it had brushes similar to these I actually had some almost identical ones in my inventory these brushes there were no brushes left there was just a spring and that's part of the reason this commutator is so badly damaged is it wore all the way out and most power tools from the major brands will have some kind of mechanism where the back of the, where the brush, either this back portion is secured. So when the brush reaches the end of the little wire, it stops moving forward. So it doesn't totally wear out. And then the spring ends up damaging the commutator. The tool stops working and then you just replace the brushes and move on. Uh, some other designs, you know, have like a little half groove in the side of the brush and so there's a little tab or the brush advances and then it'll stop various methods to prevent what happened to this tool from happening but once again so people know that's what a really worn commutator looks like now obviously it would be a bad idea to just try to replace the brush because obviously it's not going to seat very well because it's just going to be riding up on that groove you can replace brushes a couple three times commutators actually are a lot made extra thick they're designed to have multiple brushes be used on them but we have to fix this up this one's pretty com as a bit more difficult because of the strange design of this tool the fan is next to the commutator you almost never see that literally 95 percent to 99 percent of all brushed motors the fan's going to be up here so this one's a little bit more difficult many times with other uh, tools you'll be able to just to use a file you don't want to try to do that by hand filing. You'll never get it round enough and it'll be, there'll be bumps. It won't be perfectly round and it'll just chew up. You can destroy brushes in minutes. So you have to do something very careful. You don't want to damage the gears because drill truck teeth are also almost as hard or as hard as gears. You just really, really lightly want to chuck it up so that you can spin the darn thing while using the file. In many situations, like on this motor here, you have a bearing. So you'll be able to take this bearing. In my videos, I always wish I had like 20 hands. You'll put it on the edge of some surface. That way it, you will hold it with the drill here, have the bearing sit on kind of some kind of surface. That way it can spin freely. And then you can go across with the file. It's soft copper, so you'll need like a wire brush to clean, periodically clean the file. And you don't need to spin it fast. You can spin it pretty slow. And you'll just go across trying to flatten out the commutator, being careful of the bars where the wires are connected. But you'll want to try to flatten it out the best possible. Other options is, of course, using a piece of sandpaper, 
fold it over around a piece of wood, something that's flat, so you can at least try to flatten out, once again, the commutator. There are things like brush cedar and commutator cleaners, but these are extremely soft stones. They won't restore this surface. You'll just grind away the whole stone trying to. Those stones are just for this lightly dressing and roughing up a commutator so the brushes seat a little faster, which will already happen because you're sanding this. So got this chucked up just tight enough to, to hold it because I'm not going to be putting a lot of force on. It's almost loose enough where I could pull it out. You really, if you damage the gear teeth, uh, you can almost, it's uh, not even worth putting in the effort. But you do want to make sure it's straight. As we can see here, we actually got it straight. Sometimes it won't sit straight because of the gear teeth, so you got to loosen it, turn the motor just a little bit, retighten it, until you get it straight. So now we have it straight to require a little bit of hand-eye coordination. And in this case, I'm gonna have to do it this way. I'm right-handed, so I'm actually gonna run the drill with my left hand and probably need some more zoom here. There we go. Make sure I'm can't see the camera and what I'm doing at the same time but basically I'm going to put it against the edge of something since this has a ball bearing it's not a big deal that it's and then I'm gonna in my case use the edge of a file Not too hard so it doesn't run away from you. Kind of a slower process. If you have a vise, you can lightly vise this up. It's a little bit awkward because you're holding on to this drill, you know, it's sticking out there. But you can see I'm already starting to make progress on there. Using the edge of the file is not the perfect method. But remember, you're restoring a tool that does not work, so you don't have to stress about it too much. Here I found an area of the wood where there's a notch, so that will allow the bearing to kind of sit in there. So I won't be fighting this quite so much. It's so much more difficult when there's a fan right here. Most motors, you can just take the file, do this very same method, and just go along it flat, and it literally takes you like a minute or two just to clean up the commutator. This is just way more complicated because I have to avoid these uh, where the wires are connected and the fan, so I have this little three-quarter inch zone that I have to stay in. But it's probably good that I do it on something like this. and it will just take a bit of time. Just to go along and dress it up. Since I am using the narrow edge of the file, I'm trying to hold it at an angle because as you hold it at an angle, relative to the surface that you're trying to file, it makes it have a wider contact area and it's easier for you to try to maintain parallelism rather than try to go in little slots like this. So what I'm trying to do is go angles like this and like this so I can get the whole commutator relatively flat. I'm just using a stainless steel wire brush and periodically I'm just brushing out the file to clean out the flutes and I should also mention that it's a heck, it's also more, much more difficult when you are just by yourself because you've got to hold the drill with one hand and try to manage 
basically re fixing the commutator with the other. If you have anybody who can help you, it can dramatically help or it can be much handier because then that person can run the drill and you can just focus on restoring the commutator. This one with the way this fan here, this is making this a nightmare, a much slower process. Here we go, far from perfect. This was like one of the biggest hat. This was the worst motor to try to do this on. As you can see, I nicked up against the fan a few times, but not a big deal. Uh, I can tell you that with a fan on that, on the end of the motor like that, makes this job uh, quite a bit more difficult. That's for sure. Way more difficult, especially if you don't have a triangular file, one that's just the right size to fit in there. A lot of people may not, so little pieces of sandpaper, edge of the file just going this way and this way, and I got this close enough. I mean, the motor is already really worn, and you can see after a few minutes, it's not perfect, not by uh, a long shot, but it's going to be close enough. One thing you'll want to do is, because you'll get end up with just a bunch of burrs and stuff in between these contact bars, is you're going to want to take a pick and not going to going away from the wires you're going to want to take a pick and just scrape out in between the slots to knock out any of those burrs that are going to be in there the surface is already going to be roughed up so it'll break in the brushes pretty quickly i mean on most motors it's going to be like this since uh this was a defective motor that actually came if i can find it there are these sleeves that are inserts that help push the wires down, keep them from flying out. And this motor is actually missing one. Anyway, so much easier because you can do what I just said, but you don't have that dang, that fan. It's amazing how much more difficult that made it. You can just take the file, go along flat, and it's just, it's usually a super easy process. It is copper, it is soft, but not quite as soft as you think. It is a copper alloy because the idea is that the brushes are supposed to wear out. And you're supposed to get, you know, as little wear as possible on the commutator while having high conductivity. And a lot of the wear isn't just a physical, the mechanical scrape, uh, scraping or quote-unquote abrasion of the brush against the commutator. It's the fact that it's electrical. So there's all these little sparks uh, happening. And those little sparks uh, are causing electrical erosion of the commutator. And that's where... A, probably half the wear comes from it isn't just the mechanical sliding action of the brush it's the little sparks causing electrical discharge erosion and got it all back together now didn't do a, a perfect job on the commentator once again it was just difficult with the fan at the back most motors will be a lot easier otherwise So it's a decent 3 8 drill, right angle drill. I believe it was made by Milwaukee, but may just be a pretty good knockoff. Already have a Milwaukee, but this will be like a loner or just a junker, a kind of a beater, knowing that it's already pretty worn. But it's kind of nice to have drills like that, ones that uh, you're not worried about damaging or losing or maybe you're using it outside and you know under the house the dirt or that kind of stuff and ones that you use more for garage projects and so certainly was uh, I consider this to be a success it just says to note that since you've had the like in this situation where you had to file down the commutator already we're going through a whole set of brushes the fact that it was allowed to run the, at, down to the point that it was costed a lot of life on that commutator. I don't know if there's enough thickness to do that again. You'll probably get away with like another brush change before the motor itself is worn out. And I'm pretty sure it's not something that you can replace. So that's the kind of the whole purpose. Is it just a little bit of labor allows you to breathe life into a new tool or into an old tool, I should say. And because of that, can the overall level of usage you're not you know you don't feel as bad about it if it gets broken or lost or something like that anyway thanks for watching talk to you next time